Good morning. So, we will come back to the lectures. So, in the last class uh, we were trying to prove the regularity, we also discussed uh, the regularity, we have discussed some regularity, we also discussed the importance of proving regularity in many applications. So, what you will be seeing in this course is very very minimal, there is a huge literature ahead of it. So, if you want to even read such a literature, you have to get familiarized what. Uh, so, we are doing in this course very bare minimum of the modern literature, okay. there has much more. But I felt yesterday probably in this uh, uh, regularity, I have gone through in a hurry. So, probably I will spend another 10 minutes uh, uh, just recalling once again the regularity theory, later I felt that uh, I was in a hurry little bit. So, let me just uh, give a brief again once more about the regularity of weak solution. It is exactly we are told yesterday, but I am going to do. So, we are starting with a function if u is an h 1 function which satisfies uh, uh, this condition, satisfies uh, uh, your equation in L 2 of R n but uh, then the conclusion is that u is in h 2 of r you see and then you have an estimate. So, you are getting you are starting with u is in h uh, the additional assumption is f is in l 2 that is already given of course, h, f with h minus 1 you can prove the uh, existence, but if f is in l 2 you get an additional regularity of u is in h 2 and if you have more regularity of f is in h m. Uh, then you can see that your solution will be. So, even though the second order equation eventually you are getting u is in h m plus 2 of r n and so we are proving this first in r n and you have this estimate you see. And the proof was uh, you have seen in this case on r n it was just by Fourier transform you take on Fourier transform this one first to write this is in this form and f is in L 2 and u is in uh, L 2. So, you start with f in L 2 and then you take the Fourier transform and then you get mod psi square u hat equal to f hat minus u hat and uh, Fourier transform is an isometry on L 2 you get f hat is in. So, this is in L 2 of R n. So, you get uh, 1 plus mod. So, u hat is in L 2 mod psi square u hat is in L 2. So, you get 1 plus mod psi square is in L 2 of R n see as simple as it is. So, that is exactly the definition of u is in h 2 and you are known u in h, h 2 of r n that same as more 1 plus more size square into L, u hat is in L 2 of r n and that is uh, f hat that you know that is exactly the f hat. So, constant in the f hat in a by isometry you get that one. So, that part is pretty easy. When you go to uh, uh, higher order you are if you want the uh, higher uh, regularity you iterate as I said you if you assume that f is in h 1 then you see that you have this differential equation for your d, uh, thing since f is in h 1 you have your d f by d x i is in l 2. So, you can apply the first previous part of the theorem to check that d u by d x i is in h 1 h 2 for all 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n. Okay. That is exactly what u is in h 3 of r n and then you have an estimate u in h 3 of r n can be estimated by norm f n the same thing follows. Then the second part is that you are studying the upper half of the plane. So, you have r n plus here and then you do not exactly. So, you have this equation similar equation in uh, this is with the Dirichlet condition you have grade u grade v is equal to integral u v equal to that one then f is in h m of r n plus implies u is in h m plus 2 of r n and you have a similar result for. So, when m equal to 0 this is L 2 you have your h 2. So, how what is the proof? The proof is uh, 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 again little more involved. So, you do not exactly a reflection. So, maybe you can call a anti reflection or negative of the reflection. So, for every point here you have your x prime minus x n and the way is that when x n is positive u on the lower side you define it like that. 
when x n is negative you define your u n like this. Then I left many exercises these are all simple exercises you can do it during the discussion and other time. So, you can show that first you have to chief because the reflections may not obtain uh, uh, the h 1 may not preserve arbitrary uh, extension, but you can see that this reflections will not pick up when you calculate derivative basically you have to compute this d u plus d x i in r n not r n plus. Now, you have a function in r n and you can show so the first step is computing d u plus by d x i the f plus is extended in the similar way and then you show that the second step this differential equation is satisfied that is an exercise which you are. Once this is there you can uh, 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 again apply the first part of the pre theorem to show that u plus is in h 2 and this is uh, in r n you can estimate f plus and then if you write your u plus you can show this. So, that is fine the first part. So, in this you have to use the iteration there is a slight issue and uh, that is what I am going to discuss. So, you can easy to check. So, the first uh, part in the R n case you obtain this equation, but in this case you obtain this equation because only for this case when I equal to n uh, there is a it may pick up something extra. So, you have to be careful because this is where you are changing it for all other derivative there is no issue ok everything will happening like this ok. So, there is no issue. So, this equation is satisfied in L 2 of R n plus and uh, then you can follow the same procedure and you can uh, prove that by the first part this is equal to R n plus and in particular you get but you get it only for the n plus 1. So, basically you want to show that uh, your d u by d x n is in r n plus that is the uh, uh, part remaining. So, for that uh, say this you will get it because d u by d x i is in h 2 therefore, d u square u by d x i this is there for all j as well, but for i because d u by d x i is in h 2 only up to n but then uh, that means d square u by e c n l for that one. But then you use your Laplacian, your Laplacian is this one and now the only thing remaining here is this one d square u by d x n square. So, that implies uh, d square, but using the Laplacian you can write it in this form you see and that you already got it is in h 1 by the previous case because all d square u by d x i square there is no problem because it is all coming here from here ok. So, that implies so, uh, d square u by d x n square is also in h 1 that is the meaning of u is in h 3 and you get immediately the estimate. So, that part is also perfect. When you go to this result the results are also true when the Dom, uh, in a general domain omega of course, you need the smoothness. So, you need that it should be of class C m plus 2 and the result is similar if u is in h m then the u is in h m plus 2 ok and then you have the your estimate and in particular if m is greater than n by 2 h m uh, this is embedded h m plus 2 in C 2 of r you get your C 2 of r plus. Once you know that one you will get u is a as a classical solution. So, you see how regularity results is also helps you to prove this one. So, similar result can be proved for the uh, derived for the Neumann equation and as the another comment I made this is not a feature of hyperbolic equations. Uh, hyperbolic equation does not smoothen in fact, it can create singularities. So, I think uh, the play, uh, yeah, playing with the singularities is uh, kind of uh, important in hyperbolic equations. Uh, so, heat equation uh, this equation has a smoothening effect. So, uh, it is smoothens the solutions ok. So, I just want to give you the hint uh, some yesterday tried to do it in a slightly faster way. So, in the omega there are two types of estimate what is called an interior estimate and a boundary estimate. This way so any domain with is an omega bounded domain with the gamma your boundary gamma d omega is compact you have that one. So, you can cover it with the finitely many u 1 u 2 etcetera u k 
and then you take an interior thing uh, you not here and then you have your you can write your omega contained in union of u i you see i equal to 0 to k you can do that one and then you take the partition of unity corresponding to that and using that you can write u equal to in this form and I call this to be u i phi i of u. So, this is phi naught of u and phi support of phi naught of u is inside. So, estimating u naught that is equal to this is the your u naught this is phi naught of u support of u i contained in uh, i less than or equal to k. So, you see. So, getting estimate is an interior estimate. So, this is what in a slightly faster way we have done getting estimate this is the interior estimate interior estimate interior estimate this is a, of course estimate of phi naught of u because that is inside and uh, the, so that is equal to your u naught. Okay. All right. All right. So you see, you just do a computation. This is a small computation. You have to do it. It's not serious. Just calculate it. Laplace of u naught plus u naught. You will get it. And uh, this is a small exercise. You have to do that. You have to work out things. And then you call this to be g. And then u naught has support in u naught inside. And you can extend u naught. So u naught tilde is the trivial extension you see is the trivial extension okay that's what you are doing it and you have this equation because it's all have the extensions inside okay phi naught is a very smooth function and then you can apply and you can show that u naught uh, is actually smooth so you uh, that is where I have uh, gone little faster and uh, um, probably I will discuss this little more here. So, this one immediately implies you u naught tilde. So, by theorem on R n. So, you see theorem on R n, but you can show that you are u naught tilde and hence u naught uh, extended point is uh, is h2 okay this h2 of rn is the same as u naught restricted to omega uh, is in h2 of omega you see and you get your estimate on that okay so that's the about the interior estimate of that one so if you want to go to other thing so for the boundary estimates so you have your boundary estimate so let me spend a few minutes there boundary estimate as i said i will not do the cal complete calculation and uh, boundary estimate so you have your domain here and then you have this one and uh, you take these two here okay so, this will go here that is what I say this is your q plus and this is uh, how do you do. So, you have this direction you have your g and uh, this direction you have your map g inverse you do that one and then you can take this to here. So, what you will get is here you can write down this equation in this form minus Laplace you know you will still get your equation you can write down some Laplace of u i this is 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to k you can write some g till g again which is in L 2 of omega intersection u i ok you can do. So, you write down this so write down that ok that is an exercise exactly write down that one and then you will also get a new g in that space less than or equal to norm f you can get that all that estimates. Now, you make a translation through g here and uh, so this is equivalent to uh, saying that gradient of u i 
gradient of phi is equal to integral of g phi for all phi in h 1 naught of omega intersection u i. Now, you transfer your u i you can uh, transfer u i, u i to here the u i is defined here ok. So, u i to some w. So, I am fixing i fix i ok fix i you can transfer this w and then uh, how do you do that that is nothing but u i of g ok you can do that one and this is a function in defined on q plus. So, you see and then transfer this differential equation that is what we will do you can do that. So, transfer star to an equation in q plus the one trouble is that it will not be Laplace n it will be some second order equation. Then uh, a k l some equation d w by d y l k d z by d y l equal to some g tilde. So, you can g also can be transferred on q plus and z of y d y. This is true for all y in q plus you see where this is smooth and this is nothing but your g composition g you see. So, you can prove actually regularity for this equation also regularity you see uh, which I am not going to do there is a different proof what I have given this is q plus is like r n plus you have to understand that q plus except for that q n plus is something an r n plus and the proof which I have given here is using Fourier transform, but you can also give a direct proof and that is why you look at this uh, book on function analysis sub low spaces and that one you can regularity can be proved ok using that and which will give you regularity regularity for uh, u i that is equal to phi i u uh, for all 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to k. So, you say and this is a kind of called what are called boundary regularity boundary regularity. Okay. You can do that one and you also we made some comments yesterday uh, regarding the uh, some comments already we made. You can actually prove uh, this is the remark regularity can be proved regularity is available. for more weak solutions more we in the sense of adjoint and this is such, such solutions are also important especially when you study other things like uh, uh, control theory and other things. So, something like this one u in L 2 of omega. So, we are looking not even in H 1 and such that uh, uh, minus u Laplace n of phi such uh, appropriate regularities are there for f phi for all phi in d omega. This is in the sense of distribution basically and uh, analysis is more difficult probably you can see reference uh, references like Agman their papers and all that. I will not uh, elaborate on that and you can prove regularity. 
So, other command which I already told you yesterday, so let me not want to write it. So, when f is in c infinity of omega, you are eventually getting u is in c infinity of omega. In particular, if you have an omega subset of uh, compactly embedded, if from here you can get any subset u is in c infinity of omega. But if you deduce this result, it is coming actually from that. But um, what more you can do is that you can do local regularity in the sense that f is assumed to be c infinity of omega for this equation you can also prove u is in c infinity of omega. So, f can be very bad outside small omega that is what I say and this property is called hypo ellipticity. So, what we have proved is that uh, 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 hypo elliptic. So, what I was trying to say is that so let me note another page now. So, you have a definition a linear operator linear operator L is said to be hypoelliptic said to be hypoelliptic if T is C infinity where T is a distribution solution where t is in if t is uh, uh, is in uh, whenever so let me show that t if t is infinity whenever lt is infinity lt is in that means lt equal to f whatever it is e infinity of that Thing. So, whenever you have a local C infinity and uh, you have your distribution solution will become C infinity. So, this all uh, what I want to say that. Okay. So, there are regularity results uh, more uh, general regularity results. So, you can keep on discussing many regularity results, uh, but you are given what is given is a very sample regularity. Okay. So, let with this we will go to another interesting thing called maximum principle maximum minimum principles maximum minimum this may not be new to you because you are already seen in the classical case principle okay. i will prove just one result but what i want to do is that I will uh, recall the before going to this I will uh, just recall in this class and then we will continue in the next class. So, let me recall the classical recall for this uh, sake of completeness and this is discussed what I am going to say now is already discussed in the uh, our PDE 2 course maybe even PDE 1, one of the two in the PDE course we are there. So, recall the classical strong maximum principle of course, minimum is also there, but we most of the time we name it a strong maximum principle maximum So, let me just recall that one. So, let omega open connected bounded and uh, so you are doing in the classical case. So, u is in C 2 of omega intersection C of omega bar such that you can do it uh, uh, such that I am assuming only one thing Laplacian of u less than or equal to 0. So, you get a uh, reverse thing uh, then either u is constant identically a constant. or 
you will not have an interior minimum u x equal to strictly greater than infimum of u over gamma. Infimum of u over gamma, gamma is bounded close, it is continuous at the boundary, it is same as the minimum of u over the boundary, you see. This is true for all x in omega, okay. So, infimum is not infimum is not achieved interior, not achieved in omega. Since omega is bounded, omega bar is closed compact. So, the infimum will be there and that infimum is achieved at the boundary unless you use a constant. If you use a constant, both the minimum and maximum will be there. So, you have this inequality. Okay. And uh, if Laplacian of u greater than or equal to 0, you have the reverse inequality for the supremum. You will have the uh, uh, gives you supremum inequality, supremum reverse inequality, inequality. Okay, you already seen such things, and if you have the harmonic functions, so you have the uh, both sides in that case. Okay, so you will get a L infinity estimates. That's an addition. So the maximum principles are very powerful can prove uniqueness and many results using maximum principle. The applications for maximum minimum principles are enormous. Okay. The proof of this is Q curve. So, let me proof is based on. So, this is just to uh, based on what is called uh, the Gauss law of arithmetic mean, mean value property Gauss law of arithmetic mean it's also called that way arithmetic so basically the mean value property okay what is that let me recall that if uh, laplacian of u is less than or equal to 0 then you have your uh, domain omega you take any point x or any neighborhood any ball of radius rho, this is the radius rho, then you can write your u x greater than or equal to, uh, this is the average, this is the volume of the unit ball, you know all that. So, let me not do all this, state again mod x minus y equal to rho of u of y, you can write interior inequality also. And if Laplacian of u greater than or equal to 0, you have your reverse inequality. Laplacian of u equal to 0, you have your equality. And this can be any ball. Okay. It is a average. You can have the interior average. This is nothing but the average. Okay. Because it is the Okay, so yeah, it's right. So it's based on that one. So let me state the proof in one quickly. So, uh, so what is the proof? Because the present one, I will write it in the. Uh, so these are the things you can. So let an m equal to. So this is what is done in the thing for the as I said it is for the completeness I am calling equal to gamma and you write omega equal to omega 1 union omega 2 where omega 1 is equal to set of all x in u omega such that the u x equal to m omega 2 is equal to set of all x in omega. This is a topological type proof u x uh, greater than m because m is the minimum. Okay. So, it is a okay. So, you can immediately see that 
uh, this is open that is now by continuity and you can also see that this is closed that is just use the continuity. So, what the claim is that ok omega 1 is also open ok. How do you prove that one? So, you you have something like that. So, you want to show that. So, you choose uh, so you are uh, looking at a contradiction. So, you are looking so assume that omega 1 is non empty of course, if you uh, uh, omega 1 is non empty you have nothing to prove it. So, you uh, assume that uh, x is in omega 1 and you want to show that is open. So, you want to show that there is a neighborhood the entire neighborhood uh, lies in omega 1. So, okay, x is in omega 1 and you want to show that omega 1 is uh, open. So, how do you prove that one? So, uh, by the arithmetic mean you just uh, write down this inequality integral over mod x minus y. So, this is follows from the uh, arithmetic mean u of y d sigma y minus omega n rho power n minus 1 m u x right. So, you have this one, okay. but x is fixed only y is varying. So, this can be written as integral of mod x minus y equal to rho is u y, but u x equal to m x is in omega. So, u x equal to m. So, you have your u y minus m into and this is the average. So, that will uh, give, uh, give you uh, the correct thing integration. So, it will go that one. So, this is into d sigma y and on the surface this is greater than or equal to 0. So, u y is greater than or equal to 0. So, this will be greater than or equal to 0. So, that implies integral of mod x minus y equal to rho u y minus m is greater than equal to 0, but then the, this is a sign preserving. So, this is greater than or equal to 0. So, that implies u uh, y equal to m for all y in the ball of radius rho, but then you can work with any rho 1 work with any rho 1 less than rho and that will imply your u y is identically m on b yeah this is on the boundary we will write only on the boundary because this is on the boundary. So, here you get it on the boundary, but then you work with any row 1 less than row and then you get it d b row 1 row the same thing and that implies p rho x that implies uh, omega 1 is no that implies uh, uh, b rho of x is contained in omega 1 implies omega 1 is open. So, that uh, proves the result ok. So, if there is a point it, 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 if there is an interior point where the minimum is achieved and then uh, if there is a point omega 1 has to be a constant eventually. So, omega 1 will be the whole space omega because of the connectedness and all that. So, I will stop here and then uh, you can actually uh, continue as I said many results in these directions, but we will not know what we will do. This is a strong maximum principle which we discussed in detail in the last class uh, PDE course first PDE uh, first course on PDE and uh, we will do one maximum principle for the weak formulation. Thank you, thank you.